Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really pleased to be here giving you this lecture. I have chosen this topic of heterogeneous lungs because it is very complex and there is disagreement even among the experts, uh, including the chest radiologists. Heterogeneous lungs is a very nonspecific finding. It's as nonspecific as fat stranding is in the rest of the body. It can be seen in inflammation, trauma, edema, and even neoplasm such as multifocal adenocarcinoma in situ, which was previously known as bronchioloalveolar cell carcinoma. And the funny thing is that heterogeneous lung can be normal. And that was discovered at uh, a study done on asthmatics where they found that the healthy controls also had heterogeneous lungs. And then there is confusion amongst the radiologists. They don't know how to describe it, what terminology to use, what follow-up to advise. As Early as last December, or I should say as late as last December, Fleischner Society, which is the Society of Chest Radiologists, Chest Surgeons, Pulmonologists, Pulmonary Pathologists, they all got together and they came up with a de definition of mosaic attenuation. And they defined it as patchwork of regions of differing attenuation seen on CT of the lungs. Such heterogeneity has well-defined borders corresponding to the secondary pulmonary lobules. What do they mean? Do they mean that they have polygonal shaped areas of differing lung attenuation, which was previously known as crazy paving? Well, the radiologist is actually limited by such a definition because the heterogeneity may not have polygonal appearance. Look at this example. Here the lungs are heterogeneous. There are no polygonal shaped uh, heterogeneity here. In fact, it is subsegmental, even segmental and low bar in distribution. So my suggestion to all of you would be to drop the word mosaic, word mosaic and instead just use the word heterogeneous lung attenuation when you're encountered with the entity. The Fleischner Society also put forth three major pathologic causes for heterogeneous lungs. Small airways disease, pulmonary vascular occlusion, and then primary parenchymal disease. And remember, when we say primary parenchymal disease, we include the whole spectrum of diseases from inflammation to neoplasm, as I mentioned earlier. It's as nonspecific as fat stranding. One word of caution, though, is it's different from fat stranding. In the lung, hyperlucent zones can be abnormal. So it's not always the denser areas that are abnormal, but the lucent areas may be abnormal. The three primary causes that I'll be discussing is regional differences in aeration, regional differences in perfusion, and abnormal alveolar filling process, which may either contain cells, fluid, or both, in which case we would call it ground glass opacities. And remember that in real life, that there is some combination of all three. And why do I say that? Why is combination the norm? Because aeration and profusion are independent through complex reflex mechanism. The best example I can come up with is hypoxia-induced vasospasm. When you have an endobronchial obstructing lesion, you will have hypoxia-induced vasospasm in the lung distal to the point of obstruction. And then perfusion and aeration abnormalities are often associated with alveolar filling or ground glass opacities. So you always have a combination of abnormalities. So the main cause may not be obvious. So how do you approach such a case? The first step is to determine the distribution. Is this truly lobular as the Fleischner Society 
intended to describe with crazy paving appearance? Is it subsegmental, segmental, low bar, or patchy multifocal? Is it peripheral or central, or is it upper lobe or lower lobe predominant? The second step would be to try and determine the main cause. Is it varying aeration? Is it varying perfusion? Or is it predominantly ground glass or pacification? Let's talk about the differential diagnosis of heterogeneous lungs caused by abnormalities of aeration. Here I have depicted on a computer diagram on emphysema. Centrilobular or panlobular emphysema can impart heterogeneity, and it's part of airways disease. Air trapping, if it is partial, will give you overexpansion of the lung and air trapping distally and give you a hyperlucent area. And atelectasis is caused by complete obstruction of an airway will give you increased density of the lung and crowding of the blood vessels. So the main differential diagnosis of heterogeneous lungs caused by abnormalities of aeration are emphysema and airways disease. What are some of the helpful hints that you can use in coming to the main cause as being due to aeration abnormality? You might see bronchial and bronchiolar wall thickening. You might see scattered micronodules caused by either plugging of bronchi and bronchioles. And you might see tree and bud appearance where you have sentry acinar uh, alveolar filling process giving you hazy micronodular opacities. And I will show you examples. This is a patient with DIP. Clearly, the patient has heterogeneous lungs. There's bronchial wall thickening as depicted here and here and here. And there are ground glass opacities. These areas clearly more than just normal lung density. And there are micronodules. Now, how can one say based on a single high resolution image that there are micronodules? If you look at a normal high resolution one millimeter pin image and you use the scale available to you, if you picture a polygonal shaped secondary pulmonary lobule using the scale on the right hand side here, you will see that there are clusters of micronodules that are too close together. Normally, in a secondary pulmonary lobule, you should only see two to three end-on blood vessels. But if you start seeing more than that, five or six, you know that this is micronodular disease. And certainly, you can scroll through the images to make that determination. This is a Another smoker who has a milder form of the disease called respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial lung disease, abbreviated as RBILD. The lungs are heterogeneous. There are some patchy ground glass opacities. And there's bronchial wall thickening. When you start seeing endon bronchi out in the outer third of the lung, then you know that there is bronchial wall thickening. Normally, you should not be able to see that. And these are definitely sub-centimeter nodules. They're too large to be out in the periphery by themselves because the vessels centrally are smaller. So those are definitely nodules. So this patient has heterogeneity due to varying aeration, and the patient has RBILD. This is a patient who has sarcoidosis. There are ground glass opacities bronchial wall thickening, and heterogeneous lungs as a result. So this is a uh, patient of sarcoidosis with heterogeneous lungs. This patient has bronchogenic dissemination of atypical mycobacteria, has cough and low-grade fever. The lungs are heterogeneous, and there are micronodules. And they're sort of clustered within lobules. Here's another cluster of micronodules. There are clusters of micronodules. These are way too many to be blood vessels in the subpleural lung zone. So this is a 
patient who has heterogeneous lungs due to varying aeration in a patient with bronchogenic dissemination of MAI. This is a patient with nonspecific low respiratory tract infection, possibly viral in origin. Lungs are heterogeneous, and there is a tree in bud appearance. If you look at the vessels here, they seem to have fluffy or hazy micronodules at the ends of their, you know, branch-like um, structures. In reality, they are actually at the ends of bronchioles, but because bronchioles are not resolved to that degree on the CT, you can see them as ends at the ends of blood vessels. So this is a patient who has lower respiratory tract viral infection with tree and bud appearance and heterogeneous lungs. Another example, or actually it's the same case with different area lower down in the lungs showing again tree and bud appearance that I have circled in green. This patient has extensive tree and bud appearance, some degree of heterogeneity where it's hyperlucent in some areas and not as much lucent elsewhere. But the tree and bud is a predominant appearance here. This is Asian diffuse pan bronchiolitis, known to be caused by virus as well. Run-of-the-mill smoker with emphysema, bullous changes in the right apex, not so bad on the left side. This is heterogeneous lung caused by emphysema. Coming on to regional differences in profusion giving rise to heterogeneous lungs, there are two basic scenarios. You can get hyperprofusion, as depicted here in number one, and the area will be denser, and the blood vessels will be prominent. And you can get hypoperfusion, where you will have a relatively lucent area with attenuation of the blood vessel. The two main differential diagnoses to consider are chronic pulmonary thromboembolism and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Helpful hints to use in this situation is that there'll be variable vessel caliber. Smaller vessels will be present in the loosened lung zones. Larger vessels will be present in the denser areas. In pulmonary arterial hypertension, you will get peripheral pruning. And in pulmonary venous hypertension, you will get redistribution. So in patients with left heart failure and pulmonary edema, where you may have heterogeneous lungs, you will see redistribution. And remember, there will be no bronchial wall thickening, no micronodules, and no tree and bud appearance. This is a patient with chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. I have pointed arrows at two distinctly different areas. The denser area has reasonably prominent vessels, and the lucent area in the left upper corner has attenuated vessels this is a patient with chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. The heterogeneity is due to a different perfusion. Another example of chronic pulmonary thromboembolism, look at the difference in the vessel caliber and the accompanying changes in the lung density. The lucent areas have attenuated vessels. The denser areas have larger prominent vessels. So this is heterogeneous lung due to a perfusion abnormality, and in this case, it's chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. You can see the same thing here on the right, where the vessel with the larger vessel causes the, the lung to maintain its density, whereas attenuated vessels, which were probably occluded by the uh, thromboembolic episode in the past, has given lucent areas. Basically, it's body's attempt to eliminate profusion and waste profusion to the non-functioning uh, pulmonary circulation. Another example of heterogeneous lungs with hyperlucent area with attenuated vessel, denser area with prominent vessel. This is a patient again of another patient of chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. 
the denser areas have prominent vessels, the lucent areas have attenuated vascularity as seen here. An example of pulmonary arterial hypertension that I took from ADR of 1997, there is peripheral hyperlucency and relatively denser central lung zones. The central vessels are prominent and there is really peripheral pruning. The vessels, you don't see the branching pattern of the vessels that you would normally see. So this is heterogeneous lung caused by pulmonary arterial hypertension. An example of uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency where you see panlobular bibasilar emphysema and attenuation of vascularity due to pulmonary, associated pulmonary arterial hypertension. So this is heterogeneous lung caused by combination of emphysema and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now, sometimes it may not even be possible to ascertain with certainty the primary cause. Is it aeration or perfusion? What do you do in such situation? How would you handle such a case? You should suggest in the report that you should correlate with pulmonary function tests or recommend CT in inspiration and expiration, and that will help us differentiate uh, the two possibilities. If the patient has airways disease, you would be able to show air trapping and therefore confirm that it is due to differing aerations. Coming to primary parenchymal lung disease uh, that leads to heterogeneity, we will discuss um, various causes of ground glass opacities. The opacities may be peripheral, central, patchy, and multifocal. This is an example diagrammatically represented here of subpleural ground glass opacities. It is a very nonspecific finding and is seen in a host of conditions. It has a long list of differential diagnoses, drug toxicity, connective tissue diseases, nonspecific idiopathic interstitial pneumonia, permeability pulmonary edema, asbestosis, and H1N1 viral pneumonia. This is an example of NSIP where you can see the ground glass opacities are subpleural in distribution with sparing of the central medullary regions of the lung. So heterogeneous lungs caused by peripheral ground glass opacities. Helpful hints in this situation is that the peripheral ground glass opacities are usually worse at the bases and may have associated reticulation or reticular nodularity. This is an early nonspecific idiopathic interstitial pneumonia. You can see subpleural ground glass opacities. How do you know this is not dependent atelectasis? Well, if you start seeing it creep along the sides of the lung, then you know that this is abnormal. And if you're not sure, like this is definitely creeping up along the sides and it's not dependent, you know that this is not dependent uh, atelectasis giving the subpleural ground glass opacities. This is truly a uh, NSIP case. And you can always scan in the prone position or recommend that the patient be scanned in the prone position. Here's a patient who had chronic shortness of breath subpleural ground glass opacities with some areas of reticulation. Again, the differential is a long list. All you can say is describe the finding and suggest the differential diagnosis. Patient with subpleural ground glass and more prominent reticular opacities, which lower down you can actually see that the patient is developing honeycombing. So this patient has idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. This is an example that we came across uh, last year of an H1N1 viral pneumonia. There are subpleural ground glass opacities. Some of them are patchy and 
more confluent on the left. Lower down, subpleural brown glass opacities turning to consolidation with air bronchograms in some areas. Coming on to ground glass opacities with a central distribution uh, depicted here centrally, the differential diagnosis is pulmonary venous hypertension associated with left heart failure, hydrostatic pulmonary edema, which may be due to fluid overload. This is a patient with pulmonary venous hypertension. There are septal lines and ground glass opacities in the uh, regions of the lung that have the increased profusion patient has redistribution. How do I say that? Because the vessels in the non-dependent lung zones are bigger than the vessels in the non-dependent lung zones. So this is left heart failure with pulmonary edema. What are some of the helpful hints you can use? There's redistribution of blood flow. The engorged vessels will be not have, will not have a redistributed appearance in patients with fluid overload. They will just be bigger than the accompanying bronchi all over the lung. That's the distinction between left heart failure and fluid overload. And these conditions may be associated with pleural effusions. Here's what I have done to diagrammatically represent redistribution of blood flow in pulmonary venous hypertension. The non-dependent vessels are bigger than the dependent vessels that are usually in the posterior lung zones if the patient is scanned in the supine position. Here's an example of redistribution. The vessels in the non-dependent lung zones are bigger than the vessels posteriorly. And I'm going to show examples of this so that you can train your eyes to look for it because we get a lot of patients with rule out pulmonary thromboembolism and this is what the patient usually has as a cause of shortness of breath redistribution. Another example of redistribution. Big prominent vessels, non-dependent vessels are bigger than the dependent vessels. This is a patient who has left heart failure, redistribution, the non-dependent vessels are bigger than the dependent vessels, there are ground glass opacities, heterogeneous lungs as a result, and pleural effusions to help. Another example with redistribution, the non-dependent vessels are bigger than the posterior dependent vessels, patchy areas of ground glass opacities, and pleural effusions. This is just left heart failure. Another example of pulmonary edema due to left heart failure, ground glass opacities, heterogeneous lungs as a result, prominent non-dependent vessels, and pleural effusions. Coming to multifocal ground glass opacities, that's again a very nonspecific finding, can be seen in early pneumonia, multilobar pneumonia, adenocarcinoma in situ, which was previously called bronchioloalveolar cell carcinoma, acute chest syndrome seen with sickle cell disease, pulmonary trauma and contusion, aspiration, pneumocystis infection, sarcoidosis, particularly alveolar sarcoidosis, and all of the examples of airways disease I showed you are associated with um, ground glass opacities. And then um, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, which was previously known as BOOP, and then alveolar proteinosis. This is a child with sickle cell disease, has heterogeneous lungs, there's dense consolidation in the left lower lobe, ground glass opacities in the right lower lobe. You can see that the microcirculation is attenuated in this patient due to sickling of red blood cells. This is just pulmonary edema with decreased vascularity. Another patient, sickle cell patient with lobar heterogeneity, microcirculation is attenuated. Normally, if you use the scale that I have uh, included in this image, the um, one centimeter polygonal shape should have at least two or three vessels, whereas here, if you look at the distribution of the vessels, they're really missing the arterioles and venules in this segment of the lung. 
So this is a combination of ground glass opacities with hypoperfusion. This is an early DIP and a smoker has ground glass opacities, heterogeneous lungs, bronchial wall thickening, and micronodules. I showed you earlier, these are way too many to be within a secondary pulmonary lobule. This is a patient of cryptogenic organizing pneumonia following a viral infection. You can see confluent lobules of air trapping, some areas of lobular atelectasis, and then ground glass opacities. This was previously known as BOOP. Could this be alveolar proteinosis? Yes, without knowing the history, one cannot make that distinction. Another example of cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, you have areas of lobular air trapping and some areas of atelectasis and heterogeneous lungs due to ground glass opacities. Same patient further down in the chest, there are areas of air trapping, hyperlucent lung, ground glass opacities, and some areas of atelectasis with crowding of the airways. This is a patient with ARDS. The heterogeneity is actually iatrogenic caused by barotrauma and interstitial emphysema. You can see the air dissecting along the airways. Patient of pulmonary alveolar sarcoidosis having multifocal patchy areas of ground glass opacities. There's area of air trapping and a denser nodule. This is heterogeneous lungs with multifocal ground glass opacities. Patient of pneumocystis pneumonia, you can see the patient has heterogeneous lungs due to ground glass opacities caused by the infection. And you don't see the vessels in this because it's a minute image. An example of aspiration giving heterogeneous lungs with denser areas in the dependent lung zones with confluent acinar opacities. This is heterogeneity due to aspiration. So in conclusion, in order to make a reasonable diagnosis when you're encountering heterogeneous lungs, the radiologist must have detailed clinical information. Avoid the use of the word mosaic because it can be very confusing and in the absence of the mosaic or crazy paving, you may not know how to describe it. Instead, just use the term heterogeneous lung attenuation. Describe the pattern of heterogeneity, whether it is lobular, subsegmental, segmental, lobar, geographic, upper lobe, <coughs> excuse me, or lower lobe, central or peripheral in distribution, or is it dependent? And then look for helpful hints. In situations where you have the small airways disease and varying aeration, you will see bronchial wall thickening, micronodules, and a tree and bud appearance. And in diseases where you have varying perfusion, you will see variable vessel caliber, redistribution in pulmonary venous hypertension, pleural effusions, and then peripheral pruning in pulmonary arterial hypertension. And in the absence of any clinical information or any of the helpful hints I mentioned, you can format the report as follows. Heterogeneous lung attenuation, which may be due to differences in perfusion or differences in aeration, or may be due to early alveolar filling process, advise clinical correlation. Further evaluation with CT and inspiration and expiration may be used to detect air trapping. So this way we can, as radiologists, distinguish between diseases that give heterogeneity due to airways disease or heterogeneity due to perfusion abnormalities. What will happen is such a report will lead to either a pulmonary or a cardiac consult or both. And that's really our main job. Thank you for your attention.